Hello everyone. I want to go through this file um, a little bit. This is your assignment for the week and it's your optimization number two. Essentially, if you read through the chapter, you'll be able to follow mostly, I think, what he's asking you to do. But what this is really an exercise in is sort of a supply chain exercise. You are the producer of orange juice and you have 10 suppliers over here. And these 10 suppliers, might be 11, I don't know, whatever, some number of suppliers over here. These uh, suppliers, um, are ones you can purchase from. And if you read the scenario in the book, it, he explains kind of how it all works out. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to produce certain amounts of orange juice or certain amounts of product. And you have to do that in order to meet your sales goals. But in order to make the highest margins that you possibly can, you need to reduce your costs as much as possible. What's also a problem is that there are certain oranges that are certain types and fit certain parameters and fit certain quality controls and you need a variety of mixes of those oranges in order to be able to make that work so that's kind of what this scenario is really about it's about trying to produce a fixed amount of product acquiring the products that you need and doing that in the most cost effective way possible the file that I've given you looks like this, or it would should look like this if you adjust the columns. Um, it might be a little bunched up when you actually open it up for the first time. What you have here is the varietal. You have the country that it's coming from. You have the quantity that's available to you. How much could you actually purchase? And these are in blocks of 1,000 gallons. And so each of the different varieties gives you a different availability. That's what's actually available to you on the market. Then you have some quality control issues. You have brick slash acid ratio those values are here. Your acidity, those values are here. Your astringency on a scale of 1 to 10, those values are here. And then your color on a scale of 1 to 10, and those values are here. What follows that is your price. When you actually make juice out of those oranges, you're going to produce it in blocks of 1,000 gallons. And these are the prices for per 1,000 gallon block. And this is the amount that it costs to ship that 1,000 gallon block, each 1,000 gallon block to you. So you're going to create certain amounts of orange juice, certain amounts of product, by maximizing your selection of available product that's available to you from your different suppliers and getting it for the best price possible. The book will walk you through some of this, and what they'll do is they will, he uh, actually has you set up this second tab, which is the optimiz op optimization model tab. And it looks like this. And I want you to do the same thing. And he's pretty clear about the initial setup. He tells you where exactly to copy, because you're just going to copy your specs. This file, or this set of this block of information, just gets straight on copied over here. And he tells you exactly where to copy it. Then he has you add four columns. And those four columns are for January, February, March, and the total ordered. And what you're going to do is you're going to actually, in your exercise, you're going to maximize or optimize, shouldn't be, I should say minimize really, but you're going to optimize these values. And when you get this all set up, you'll use Solver to actually minimize this by optimizing these. So again, most of it he has you set up. It's clear, it's straightforward. Um, he's got the things like uh, a couple other fields he has you add, monthly cost, these are the costs, and this is the price of the oranges, and this is the price of the shipping. So when you buy your blocks of product from each of these providers for the month of January, February, and March, you just get a summation of what the price is. But you have to do this using some product. So if you go up here and you look, equals sum product is your function. Your sum product is a calculation of this column times the price column when the price column is over here. So for each one of your entries here, for the first supplier, first supplier is 700, you've purchased nothing. So 0 times 700 is nothing. So the first entry is 0. The second one, 13.5 times 310, whatever that turns out to be, that becomes the first entry. And you just keep crossing over. That's what some product does is it just keeps cross multiplying and then gives you a total value. And your total value down here comes out to be three, four, three, six, seven, seven point six. Same thing happens here. You've got a sum product and this is D six to D sixteen. And your 
getting the, you're going to pick up the L6 to L16 again. Now you can enter each one of these by hand and that would work. Um, but we've already learned throughout this class that there's a lot of ways to be able to save yourself a whole lot of time. And in this particular example, if you do a sum product where you're picking up C6 to C16 and you're multiplying each one of those against L6 to L16, you notice that I have dollar sign L, dollar sign 6, and dollar sign L and dollar sign 16, which is of course because I need L6 to 16 to remain the same always. Don't ever change. But the C6 to C16 should change. So once I actually manually enter that into this particular spot, I can then drag it over to the other two and it will drag over to the other two just fine. And the parts that are allowed to change, the C6 to C16 now becomes D6 to D16. And the same thing happens over here. That adjusts, but the L stays the same. It's the same thing for the shipping costs. You come down here, you do a sum product where you're copying C6 to C16 against this time now M6 to M16. And those over here are the shipping costs. You have dollar signs in the designations so that this doesn't change when you get ready to copy it over to the other columns. Okay. We have a couple other things that he has you put in, one of which is, what is our total required? How many units do we need to actually produce? Um, so these are our sales goals. And so what he has us do then is we do a sum of C6 to C16. This is what we have to, what, what these columns have to add up to. And so we'll go ahead and put that in and then this has to match it. That's one of our constraints. Another one of our constraints is that we have to order some percentage of our units have to be Valencia. And Valencia comes from Florida. So it's Florida law and we have to do it. And so we have to go ahead and put that in and that becomes another constraint. That's set to that. Each one's 240, 240, and 280. And then we set this equal to that. This equals C8. This equals D8. And this equals E8. And that becomes the amount that we have to order. So it's just a way of basically saying these have to become the same. Down here we have our quality control. And so we have our um, bricks acid ratio, our acidity, our astringency, and our color. Our minimums are specified here. And these are just hand entered. So there's nothing magical about that. Our maximums are specified here. And those are just hand entered. And there's nothing magical about that. But the rest of these are actually calculated. So the first one is going to be a sum product. This time now, You'll notice there's no dollar sign in front of the C, but the 6 is fixed. No dollar sign in front of the end range C, but the 16 is fixed. Okay, And we are comparing this against H6 and H16. Those are fixed, and we're distributing it over the units that we're going to produce. So the total units that we're going to produce is shown in C21, uh, which is here. Total required is 660. And so we know that the total per unit uh, bricks acid ratio has to fall between 11.5 and 12.5. And so for us to select the oranges that will give us that, or the orange juice, I should say, that will give us that, and we know those numbers over here, it's going to have to look over here, and that's what's part of what determines the optimal mix of what we're going to get. So we're setting this up to say C16 some product of C6 to C16 against H6 to H16 divided by our total number of units that we're producing in that month. And we're doing the same thing for all three of all four of these actually, is that we just do a sum product. And you'll just notice that this one is actually the bricks acid ratio. It's in H, column H. This is the acidity that's in column I. This is the astringency that's in column J. And this is the color and that's in column K. So H, I, J, and K. We just do that cross product, or we just do that sum product for each one of those for the month that helps us decide what's the right mix of orange juice product that we need to purchase to get us what we need to get. Okay, I think that's all the gotchas in setting up. And once you've got that set up, again, if you follow the book very closely, he will you'll probably be able to figure it out. But it, there's a couple of times I had to go, what was he talking about? And so hopefully this won't that won't hit you. And the last thing we're going to do is remember we're going to optimize this particular field. This is to keep our costs as low as possible. So we go to data, we go to solver, and this one is a little more involved than the first one we did with the guns and butter. 
but that's the field that we're optimizing, dollar sign $A, dollar sign two. And we're optimizing that field by changing values in dollar sign C, dollar sign six, through dollar sign E, dollar sign 16. And those are these fields right here. Remember, this is what we're doing, is we're looking at these to make the best possible choice. And so it's gonna actually do that work for us. Here are our constraints, and our constraints are numerous, and they're painful. And so we wanna make sure, first of all, that C20, the amount that we order, is going to be the same as the amount that we need. And so that's your first constraint. C20 through E20 is equal to C21 through E21. Then what we have to do is we have to come down and say C23 to E23 is equal to C24 through E24, and that's the Valencia oranges. That's another constraint. We have to make sure that what we order for Valencia oranges is going to meet what we have for uh, or what's required. And then we have to come down for each one of our months. We have to make sure that in this particular case, C27 through C30, and that's C27 through C30, is less than or equal to the maximum and greater than or equal to the minimum. And because you can't combine those rules, you have to put in a rule for each. This is the maximum rule. It's got to be less than or equal to the maximum. This is the minimum rule, less than or equal to the minimum. Then you move to column D and you do the same thing. Less than or equal to the maximum, greater than or equal to the minimum. And over here we do it for E. Less than or equal to the maximum, greater than or equal to the minimum. And then the last thing we do is we take F6 through F16 and we set it equal to, or make sure that it's, it's less than or equal to, G6 through G16. And what we're doing here is, let me close this out actually, Stop it. Cancel. Anyway, I'll just move this to the side. Figure that out later. Is we have to make sure, uh, that last constraint is making sure that we aren't ordering any more of any one product from any one distributor than is what than what is available on the market. So we're not maximizing. In this particular case, for the Belladonna, we're ordering all that's available to us. We're doing that for actually a couple of these, but we're not exceeding this amount. So that's our other constraint that we have. Once we have all that done, we can hit solve, and we can solve for this particular um, value. So that should be a little bit of an overview um, of how to go through this exercise. You're going to do a lot of coding, or a lot of, I'm sorry, entry of different uh, uh, functions and making sure you're getting, you're getting all the functions right. Um, but if you get it all right, you'll get an amount up here that matches the spot in the book. Um, if you don't, it could be something as simple as a single letter wrong, and you'll have to go back and figure out what that is. Okay, if you have any questions, let me know. Read through the exercise in the module, and there are two parts to it, and make sure you submit both parts.